Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Florian Inez. Okay, we can upload at the end. Thank you very much. Uh, I think I have the, the worst timing because it's just after lunch, so please don't <laughs> fall asleep. Uh, if it's boring, just uh, tell me. And I'll try, I'll try to be more captivating. Um, okay, today I'm going to talk to you about um, how open data and crowdsourcing can help us to be more efficient to map transit maps. And um, to do so, uh, I, I, will, um, I will start with um, a pretty impressive figures, figure, which is that um, there is no uh, transport map for almost 60% of the, of the cities in the world, which is, when, when, I, when I talk to specialists, to, to, to experts, they say, no, it, it must be le less than that. But if you go to, to some countries, there is no uh, maps at all. It, it just doesn't exist. And uh, also, uh, the, the people there, they don't see why they, they would need it. Um, so at Jungle Bus, we, we strongly believe that we can, we can bring uh, something uh, better. Um, so, so we created a nonprofit organization called uh, Jungle Bus. And we are currently in the process of uh, transform transforming it in, into a company right now. But we already have uh, three years experience, and I'm going to talk to you about that. Uh, yep, you can uh, hear me. So um, I'm going to talk to you about your own database. Uh, if, you, if you run a, a, a network, a public transport network, you have a database with all the lines, the stops. This is, let's say, the, the blue one, your database. It cannot communicate. It's not compatible with the one of your competitor. So it's very hard to exchange data. And also, it's not really compatible with open data. So the situation, the situation is changing. Uh, people are building APIs to connect these, these systems. But it's still very slow, very expensive to do that. So uh, we need something else. Uh, if, if I would, in an in idle situation, uh, we would need uh, a system with openness by default. So what I, I mean by openness would be the first one is to share the data, of course, which is the, the, the main goal of, of doing that. Also, you would open the software you use to, um, to share this data and open more also your own organization to external uh, partners. You would empower the community that is using, managing, creating the data, and you, you would make the, the system more, more resili resilient. Uh, so openness is really a state of man. It's, it's not really uh, like... Uh, uh, a process, uh, uh, a single process, uh, and it's not just words. Um, I believe that um, openness, uh, open data is for dark, dark ages. Back in 2010, uh, Sir um, um, uh, Tim Berners-Lee said during a TED conference, uh, raw data now. So give us the data, and, and, and uh, he started the open data movement. But it was like nine years ago, so it's like dark ages for IT. So for me, our open data is like something that we need, but it's, it's not enough. We need a, a real breakthrough innovation uh, that, uh, to share um, our data based on col collaboration. So what I want you guys to do is to flesh out your, your database. You d let's, let's say you don't need it anymore. Um, we create a tool. A single one that would uh, bring together all the all, all the people uh, to share the data. So let's call it a transit feed. Oh no, this one is dead. Uh, call it transit land. Oh no, it's 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 also dead. So um, we need we need something else. Um, so here is uh, I have a question for you. Uh, two years ago, I would I, I would ask who who knows about um, OpenStreetMap, but this time. Uh, the people that don't never heard about OpenStreetMap, can you please raise your hand? Okay, zero. Uh, okay, so you you guys already know about OpenStreetMap. Um, so the solution I'm, I'm proposing here is OpenStreetMap. Um, we think it's the it's it's the best way to do it. 
I, I, I'm going to introduce a bit what is the project OpenStreetMap uh, to remind you a bit um, of this project. So OpenStreetMap is basically a worldwide community. Uh, so it's, it's global, but it's based on local communities, local contributors that they know pretty well their own areas. So let's imagine uh, a, um, a, s a regular map and with an edit button at the top. This is exactly what Open, uh, OpenStreetMap is about. It's so-called the Wikipedia of the maps. Um, it's a vibrant community worldwide. Uh, that use uh, an open data license, so it allows the people to use the data even for profit. This is very important um, that um, you can build a lot of tools based on this data. It's also a mature ecosystem. Um, the project is, is, uh, is quite old now, and um, the technical tools are here to use the data to export the data, to create the data. There is a lot of editors and specialized ones. I'm going to introduce you to the, to the ones that are um, specially made for transport. OK, uh, OpenStreetMap, one, one last word about it. Uh, it's a growing community. Uh, it's about like 5 million uh, contributors in the world. But uh, to be honest, it's, it's more like, like three, uh, 300,000 people around the world. That, that make the, proble the, the project run. Um, we consider it as a, a hub, a GIS hub, to exchange data. And our goal is to make OpenStreetMap the, the, the platform to share the data for transport. It's used by your favorite newspaper. You, you use a lot of OpenStreetMap uh, maps, but you don't even know it. You don't notice it. You have it on the, your favorite newspaper's website. Uh, in a lot of apps, Facebook use it, uh, use it Apple Plan use it, and ta-da, uh, thanks uh, uh, you for the introduction. RATP is also using it on, on, the, on their uh, Zenway um, uh, um, screens in the, in, uh, in the tube. Uh, SNCF is using it uh, on, the, on the website of Transignan, which is in charge of the uh, local uh, train network. Um, so it can be used very uh, for specific uses, like multi-level um, spaces. Here you can see the level one of Gare de Lyon, which is just uh, right, right here. Um, okay. So now, yeah, I said, I said, uh, let's use OpenStreetMap as a hub for transport data. Um, and why do we think it's a good idea? First, um, there is a worldwide standard on how to describe the data. It's uh, based on, on, on collaboration and discussion in the, in the community. So we agree on what, how to describe a, a network. It's community-based, so um, there is a community in your country, in your, in your city, that is already existing and creating this map. And as I said, there is a, a mature ecosystem. Uh, we created um, specific tools for transport to create the data and maintain it. And uh, it's open source, and it's really like reality driven, I would say. Uh, if, if, if your idea to improve the data, to improve the project is working, the community will embrace it. If it's not, the community will not use it. OK. so. Mm, now we choose um, OpenStreetMap. Let's focus on Roxanne. Uh, Roxanne, that's her. Uh, very nice. That's our persona. So uh, we defined her as like a 35 years old, year old uh, lady, which is not into IT. She doesn't know anything about IT, but she shares the same values as OpenStreetMap, openness, etc. And she has like a business issue. She's working uh, as a tourist office in the tourist office. And she wants to produce the, the, the map of the transportation map of her, her own small town. She cannot really do it uh, on her own, so we created the tools for her. So first of all, we need to handle the complexity of the, of the data and add it to uh, Roxanne, because it's, it's, it can be quite hard. We created the Jungle Bus application. It's a free app on Android. It's open source. You can download it uh, as you want. Um, we simplified it 
as uh, the, 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 the most we can, we can do. It's just a map and with bus stops on it. That's it. There is no lines, there is no, uh, nothing. It's very simple. When you select the line, you can change its position. You can edit uh, the details. So if you edit the details, you will, you will have this screen um, with the name of the bus stop, uh, if there is a shelter, for example, if it's uh, available for wheelchairs, if there is a bench, etc., etc. You can add every detail you want. There is no limit. There is no limitation on the details you want to add. Um, and that's it. So you can, uh, so Roxanne, come back to Ro Roxanne. She will have this, this app. We'll go in uh, our own city and map every single bus stop she has. Uh, so Roxanne is may, may be not French, so we translated this app in 25 languages, including Japanese, Russian, Bulgarian, uh, you name it. And we didn't do it. The, the OpenStreetMap did it because they, 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 they saw the interest and why we, we, we were doing it. Um, so that's it. This app is working offline. That's why it's, it's called Jungle Bus. It also works in the jungle when you, you don't have any network. Um, and that's it. That's it for the app. Um, once Roxanne has created the data, for now, as she doesn't know anything about IT, it's going to be difficult for her to create the extra data. So we created specific tools for advanced OpenStreetMap users to help Roxanne to, uh, for, for QA. So this one uh, is called uh, Bifidus because it improves your transit. Uh, so it's, it's basically some alerts. So here you have a, um, a red dot uh, and there is no uh, uh, network um, on, uh, on this bus stop. So this I it is something that the local community should, um, sh should fix. And uh, we created like uh, 60 different rules, such as if the, um, the shelter of the bus stop is on the road, it might be an, uh, a, a mistake. The, the, the shelter should be next to the road. And we created like 60, 60 rules like that. And um, the OpenStreetMap co community is fixing the data every day uh, all around the world. So it's, it's, it's a complicated process, but made easier. And it, it allows the producer of the data and the user of the data to share the responsibility of QA, which is something new, I, I guess, uh, at this scale. At this scale, it's, it's, it's pretty new. OK, uh, we created also a transport map only for buses. Uh, this one is directly and dynamically created from uh, OpenStreetMap data. It's not very beautiful, and we know that. We've, we've seen a lot of uh, experiences. The transit uh, presentation that you've seen, uh, it 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 we, we've been inspired a lot by, uh, by, by their work. Uh, but unfortunately, we, we, we realized that you have to, to be like tens of, of engineers to have um, the same results. It's, it's really complicated. So this is more like a QA tool to find the lack of data. It's not something that uh, will be used by the final, the, 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 the final user. But still, it's generated automatically all around the world. So it's, it's pretty nice. OK, that's pretty um, useful. So Roxanne created uh, the data. She collected the data on the, on the field. Some advanced users corrected the data. And now we have a vis um, like a, a visual result of, of, of what has been, has been done. Uh, so we wanted to go further again uh, with uh, Jungle Bus, and we created uh, other advanced tools. The OpenStreetMap format at the center. So everything is described, and all the our projects are, are open source uh, in GitHub. But the, um, in, the in, the, in, the, in the transit world, we use GTFS. Uh, we, we, we don't use the OpenStreetMap data. So we created tools for you to use your favorite tools, such as Excel, GTFS, QGIS. It can, the data can be uh, exported like that. It creates new opportunities, and it doesn't force you to uh, adapt your process, everything, to the OpenStreetMap data. Uh, so these, these tools, uh, the first one is OSM Transit Extractor. 
it allows you to um, so import the OpenStreetMap data as a PDF and extract the lines, the stop points, stop, stop areas, and the relations members. So what we mean by a relation, a, a bus line would be a relation. In the relation, you, you would have the lines, the stop points, the stop areas in a, in a relation. So you can export all this raw data and use it uh, for uh, your own uh, business. And uh, we created uh, OSM to GTFS, which is uh, basically a tool to transform OSM data to GTFS directly. Uh, we are still working on, on these tools, but they we already used them, and uh, it, it, it's, it's, it's up and running. And the first city where we, we tried to, to use it uh, is in Accra. It is the capital of Ghana. It's three million inhabitants, and the transport there looks like that. So this is, it's called a trotro, a trotro. This is uh, um, informal transport. It's not managed by the, um, the authorities. It's, it's managed by the private sector, but it's, it's, it's the most common um, way of, of, of traveling there. So we mapped uh, all, all the lines there, and this is what it looks like. So um, we did that two years ago, and we created 3, uh, 320 lines. Uh, with the help of the local community and with the help of the local authorities. So it was important for us to involve the local community and the local authorities. So the local authorities are using the data for their own need, um, but the local community is still fixing the data years after we finished this, this creation process. So we don't have to do it on our own. It's really a, ch a shared responsibility. And we've seen uh, academics to, um, that, that, that made some studies based on this data. Uh, the data has been used by Transit uh, in, in the app. Transit, it, it, it's used to, uh, for the, for the uh, inhabitants of Accra to plan their, their, their transport. So it's, it was pretty successful. Uh, the second uh, city where we wanted to work uh, is Paris, so Ile-de-France, the, the, the large, uh, the broad uh, Paris area. And um, we, um, we started with, the, with some uh, audit, a study of the, the, the data wha wha which is available. So sorry, it's, it's in French, but it's, it's pretty obvious. It's um, in green, you have the, the, the well-mapped areas, and in white, it's, it's not mapped at all. And this is the data directly in OpenStreetMap. So in the Ile-de-France area, there is uh, uh, 40,000 um, bus stops, and uh, our ambition is to map them all. So we uh, worked uh, closely with uh, Ile-de-France Mobilité, which uh, is here, and um, uh, to, uh, to help them to, to first correct their own data uh, database, and then uh, to see how we can work together. And this is really, uh, if, if it's um, that successful, it's, it's that we c you can see the results very quickly. Let, let me um, highlight uh, like so, uh, uh, a simple example. Uh, so Rosa Park is a, um, a, um, a train station in the north of Paris. And you have uh, in, um, in, in, in blue the, the data in OpenStreetMap. No, no. The blue is the data of uh, Ile-de-France Mobilité, and and this one is the is the one of OpenStreetMap. And we measured the um, the, the distance bet between the official data and the one that is in OpenStreetMap. And we find we found uh, uh, um, some um, some w some improvements suggestions for the for the official data. And uh, so so yeah, that's it. Um, uh, what what else could I say about that? Uh, this is very complex. The data is complex to handle, to create, <coughs> to maintain, to publish. But yet, it is mandatory. If you want to create the beautiful maps you've seen this morning, if you want to create the applications of the future, if you want to create some um, uh, applications that uh, guide you directly to the bus stops, but if you are working, you need uh, more precise data than like it's like f uh, f uh, like eight, eight, uh, 80, 80 meters away. 
if you are walking, it's it's too far. So you you need you need to be more precise. So it's a complex issue, and uh, uh, a lot of people are trying to to resolve it. For example, uh, this is Google Maps in Paris. Uh, I'm living here in Montrouge, south of Paris. This part of the of the network here is the the subway line four. It has been extended in 2013. It's n it's still not in on the map. Uh, what I want to say is like uh, uh, there is a lot of data to maintain, and it's 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 difficult for everybody. Um, so now you call. What do you, wha what are you gonna do uh, with uh, with with our app? Please use it as uh, our Japanese contributor here. You can go on GitHub, check the code, use the 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 tools we created. And uh, and finally, if you have a project um, that you want to run on a specific city, we are really open to um, to help you on that. Uh, our next uh, events will be state of the map, which is the the meeting for the OpenStreetMap um, community. Uh, the, the French one will be uh, in June, and the worldwide one will be uh, in uh, in Germany in September. So please come and meet us. We are uh, excited to um, uh, to share the technical the, the, the technical part of this project. You know, I made you a, a simple presentation, but um, we explained the, the technical uh, there. Uh, so we work closely with uh, um, um, with uh, transport companies such as Kizio, Cityway, and Sistra. <coughs> <coughs> and in Africa, we worked with AFD, which is the basically the French uh, World Bank. Uh, our software is developed by Jogmaps, and we work with uh, Ile-de-France Mobility. Um, feel free to download the app, and uh, thank you for your time. Any questions? Um, so thanks for the presentation. It's 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 great. I think it's it's great that um, you're building these tools based on on OpenStreetMap. Um, I think one of the challenges, so the, one of the advantages of OpenStreetMap is you can potentially have a large number of, of volunteer contributors. Um, so it's it's easy to scale in that way in terms of number of, of eyes on the data. Um, I think the potential downside is you get places here and there where people just make mistakes if they're new to, to code in. And I think um, uh, looking at, at public transportation, or at least a couple of years ago when I did an OpenStreetMap, Managing like routes and that type of thing with relations is is tricky and not always easy to get right in the first try. Um, so I, I think the question, my question is, um, how, how do you manage that and and kind of what's the QA process? In can you are you able to automate some of detecting potential errors that would pop up if someone makes an edit, or um, do you depend more on human eyes for that? Um, how do, how do you go through that process? That's a very good question, and we had the same feeling some years ago, uh, like four years ago. We missed the tools uh, to hide the complexity of the OpenStreetMap model, and that's why we, we developed it first, the, the mobile app, but um, this kind of tools uh, come back to <coughs> uh, Bifidus, which highlights the potential errors and suggests corrections. Um, so to be honest, you, 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 you need a lot of human process, but I'm sure all of you uh, know that the transport data needs um, uh, manual corrections. So you don't avoid that, but you make it simpler. So yeah, as I said, we created six, six, uh, 60 rules, 60 different rules. And every time we focus on a specific network, we create new specific rules. But uh, in OpenStreetMap, there is um, a module that is uh, a project that is called Osmosi, uh, which already uh, manage pretty well all the errors, um, and we are part of Os of Osmosi. So Bifidus is, is just a front end for the Osmosi uh, uh, public transport rules that we created. So we don't develop uh, from scratch. We um, we 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 uh, reuse the already uh, up and running projects uh, that are already existing in the OpenStreetMap community. Thank you. Anyone else? Oh. <coughs> you mentioned network specific rules. Do you mean a, a different mode of transport, or do you mean different cities? 
I, I, I'm not sure how to add Sorry. Um, so you said there were rules, so you have 60 rules. Yes. And when you tra changed network, you said you had some specific rules. Yeah. But is that um, going from a bus network to a train network or going from Paris to Accra? It really depends the rules. But uh, for example, if there is a bus stop and there is no network attached to this bus stop, it's, it, there is something missing. A piece of data is missing. So this is a very generic rule that applies uh, all over around the world. But um, in Paris, in the Paris area, for example, if there is no um, like the official code, the unique code that is used by the local authority, if it's not on the on the bus stop, it's it's a, it's a potential error also. So we can really adapt on the needs of every network, and it it um, the the level of integration depends on the the willing of the local community. So to on some places, there are people really involved that creates uh, specific rules, but at some places, there is only generic rules. I have a question. Am yeah. I allowed to ask questions? Yeah, I am. Okay, so what about temporary changes? Like if a bus route is rerouted for a day or an afternoon or two weeks, how does the how does OpenStreetMap deal with that? Okay, it's, it's planned. There is a specific um, piece of data that you can add on, on that. Um, the, the goal of the OpenStreetMap community is to describe the world as it is. So there, there is uh, ongoing discussions on which is the level of uh, accuracy we need to achieve and uh, on, the, on, on the time scale, like uh, how long would uh, the, the works uh, last uh, until we map them on the, on the field. To be honest, it's, it's only on the contributor's uh, appreciation. appreciation. So it could vary, it could uh, like be different in some parts of the world, but uh, to, um, most of the time, the 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 the, the work has, um, are, are mapped pretty pretty well mapped on the on the map. That's uh, yeah. Anyone else? Oh. Uh, what's your business model? Who pays for this work? <laughs> Going forward, because the you know volunteers need need support and yep. need tools. So uh, first, we created it because it was fun. Uh, so we didn't have any business model as an NGO, and then we discovered that uh, some people like Ile de France Mobilité, AFD, uh, Cityway, Kizu Digital, a lot of companies uh, would be interested in having the data. So their interest is to have the data. Uh, but what we cherry uh, the most is the community. So we try to develop the community with the money that we, uh, we've been given to have the data. So uh, every time we create a tool for the OpenStreetMap community, we, tr we, we try to finance it uh, with, the, um, with the data, with the data uh, which, which is created. So we create the data, we enhance the data, we uh, update the data, we create tools for the community to update the data, and um, and we we like advise we 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 have like uh, uh, we advise the companies how to handle a uh, community, which is which is pretty. Uh, it's not obvious to work how to work with a community. It's it's not obvious for a company. Uh, the companies are open during business hours. The community is working uh, in uh, not at the same time. The tools are not the same. The the culture is not the same. So um, we help the, 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 the companies to, um, to work with the OpenStreetMap community. Anyone else? Oh. Can you help me? Yeah, OK, great. I say it in French. Thank you. Two questions. Un témoignage et une question. Le témoignage, c'est que Ile de France Mobilité fait un travail sur les pistes cyclables où effectivement on finance euh, un prestataire qui euh, nous aide à animer la communauté et je témoigne que ça fonctionne bien et que c'est euh, une euh, méthode pour euh, alimenter justement et aider la communauté à faire plus et mieux et euh, à les aider à, à créer un, un bien commun qui est intéressant. Ça c'était la première remarque. Okay, so first just a, not a question, just a, a remark that in the France Mobilité, 
is paying a, uh, a company or, yeah, to, um, to help provide uh, bike path data and uh, involve people in, in doing that and uh, it's successful so far. Et la deuxième question, c'est sur le transport public en particulier. Donc, on a travaillé ensemble. Aujourd'hui, il y a quelque chose qu'on n'a pas complètement craqué, qui est euh, la question de la cohabitation entre des données de référence ouvertes et des données qui viennent d'opérateurs sous contrat, euh, qui, euh, au travers de ce contrat, doivent produire des niveaux de qualité donnés. Et cette cohabitation de deux, finalement, données de référence Aujourd'hui, on n'a pas complètement euh, déverrouillé ce, cette chose-là. On est très content euh, que tout ça soit sur OSM. Mais il y a une question qui reste, un point d'interrogation, et je la soumets à la communauté, c'est où est le référentiel Mais je sais, on, on en discute régulièrement. Euh, donc peut-être qu'il y a d'autres expériences ou, ou dans la salle ou, ou dans d'autres expériences côté du Jungle Bus qui pourraient euh, commencer à esquisser une réflexion. I can't translate. Okay. So yeah, the, the question is, uh, um, I, um, why would uh, a local authority trust OpenStreetMap to become the the only database for the for the transport data because they already have their own uh, database? So I was a bit provocative and I said, flush your data, flush your database. But of course, I don't mean it. I, I'm I'm sure that we can find a, a way to collaborate. Um, so, um, how far do we go in the OpenStreetMap um, uh, integration of the data? Of the, of the data? Uh, this, I think it's an open question right now. Um, and OpenStreetMap is a very good solution for uh, the local authorities that don't have uh, any data at all. So, in Ghana, we created the data. They were very happy. Um, for existing um, networks, such as uh, Ile de France Mobilité, I, I don't think it, it, it will be uh, reasonable for now to, um, to map everything only in OpenStreetMap because we don't have the advanced tools for all the operators um, and, uh, and the private se sectors to follow all the data. So it's still an ongoing process for us, for JungleBus, but also the OpenStreetMap community to create these tools. They are expensive tools and we need years to, to do it or a lot of money, but we, um, we prefer to, to do it with the community. Uh, but we have plans, for long-term plans, to create um, uh, more advanced tools like that to follow very pre precisely the changes of the data and how we can fix them. We already um, worked um, um, with some companies, with uh, SNCF, for example, uh, they, they use these tools, but they are not uh, evolved yet uh, for them to use them alone. We, we, we still need to help them to do it. So I, I guess it's a question of maturity and uh, how far we want to go with, uh, uh, to the, with the integration of the data in OpenStreetMap. It might be not uh, politically uh, a good choice. Maybe it is. Uh, I guess it's your up, up to you more than, than us. But we, we are here to convince you. <laughs> yes? Hi. Um, as, as you're uh, looking to, um, go going back to the question about the business model, as you're looking to potentially fund some, some different sorts of initiatives or new initiatives, I'm just wondering if there's been any talk around um, uh, uh, taking another look at the at the content licensing um, that that goes along with the data that you produce, and potentially maybe r relaxing uh, uh, um, uh, some of that language to maybe expand who, who the, the types of consumers who could take your data. Uh, I'm, I'm not sure to have understood the the, the question. Uh, so, so so the the, the question is um, is just that that. Um, uh, one of the challenges, I think, with OpenStreetMaps data, potentially for some consumers, is uh, there's just very sp uh, specific um, uh, content license agreement, and I'm just wondering if 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 there's any been any talk about uh, changing the model uh, that which which you guys um, use for that. So you mean like sell the data? Yeah. For example. Yeah. No, no, it's really not part of the project. Okay. Uh, you ca you can uh, consider OpenStreetMap the same way you consider Wikipedia. So I, 
I'm, I'm pretty sure that Wikipedia will never sell the, the articles that are written in Wikipedia, and that's the goal. That's why they are a foundation. OpenStreetMap is based on a foundation too, and um, it's, it's meant to be open, and uh, it's, it's, um, the goal of the project is to create a, a common. So like, um, it's a digital common that we can all use, and then the private and the public sectors and the NGOs, the citizens, they can create whatever they want in the database, use it for the, uh, on, on their own, but no, no, it's, 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 it's pretty obvious that uh, the data will remain forever for free, free forever. Oh yeah, so, sorry, I meant specifically the, 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 the use it on their own part. I, I, believe, uh, I believe there's some, some requirements on, on um, if, they, if they use it for their purposes and then, then they, and they make changes, they have to then share those changes back out again uh, yeah, in okay. the common form. Um, so, uh, okay, the license is always a, t a topic because it's quite uh, important. Uh, so it's, it's the ODBL license, Open Database License, and uh, the rule is that you can use it even for profit as long as you give back the modified data. Mm -hmm. that's, that's the rule, so that's it. If, you, if it's private use or public use or uh, profit use, it, it, does, it really doesn't matter what you do as long as you give back what you, what you do. Okay. Good, thank you. Okay. Anyone else? Uh, so, um, just a, a comment on um, you know whether existing uh, agencies or operators would be interested in, in kind of leveraging crowdsourced edits um, when they're already managing their own data. Um, so, uh, we did an experiment in Tampa. Uh, where we basically uh, had an existing GTFS data set and then uh, compared that to some of the edits that happened over time in OpenStreetMap and uh, then took those changes back to the agency and said, um, and we kind of you know, graphed it out nice and neat so you could see this is how many edits were made to locations and we actually went back and, and manually verified them to make sure that the edits were, were true and then also kind of a histogram of here is how much of an error there was associated with like each bus stop location. And I mean, there were some really massive errors in the data set that um, given the scale of the system, it would have taken the agency, you know, a full system survey to actually fix those things yeah. if it was, which is very expensive. So um, it, at least in, in Tampa, the agency really saw value in that. Um, there are some challenges, I think, in terms of trying to automate, or at least partially automate that feedback process to the agency. Um, but I think in, in our experience at least, um, I think there's some value there for the agency. Cool. Anyone else? No? Okay, well thank you very much. Thank you.